Hey, what's up, guys? We're back, and we're going to be going over the effects section in Massive. In Massive, in the routing. It's right at the end, unless, of course, you bypass something. Um, so effects 1 and 2 and EQ are right up here, and then they go out to the master. All right, so I have my saw wave, and, uh, yeah, reverb's already on it. So uh, how an effect works. Uh, how these knob work, there's four, and they're dependent on the effect you choose. We have none, so none of these work. Right? N A N A N A, right? So we're going to start out with space reverb, or space effects, which are reverb and small room reverb. Uh, they're basically the same, just different sizes. Uh, so, how uh, effects work is it takes the input signal and then splits it into two, and then the, the second one uh, goes through the routing, right? goes through the effect, I should say, and then it's mixed in with the, the dry signal, or, you know, we could start out with the dry signal. So we'll have uh, the reverb um, on, and wet dry is completely to the dry, so we have no effect. And we bring this in, we bring it up, we mix it into the wet signal, which is the effect. So, you know, all the way to, you know, all the way to the right, it's the effect completely. Right? And uh, right in the middle here is 50-50. 50% uh, the dry signal and 50% wet signal. Right, so, yeah, the trick is is to find a nice little balance between it. So you basically just mix them in. So, yeah, think of it like it's being split and we're putting it together. Right, size uh, in our reverb is obviously size. You can have it, you know, kind of small, uh, but... If you ha have it really small, you might want to use a small reverb, kind of like, you know, bathroom. But you can get some really big uh, uh, size here. Right? Uh, density is the, the how, how long the reflection lasts kind of thing. I'm going to turn it up just a tad. And color is kind of a, an EQ. Right? You want the, the high-end reflection, so you have like a really big sound for the color. So just think of this as like an EQ, and all the way down, it's kind of... Right? The, the reverb reflection. Oh, we'll go all wet. Right? Kind of, you know, like, low-passed. And then all the way up there. So, you know, instead of having like a super huge size for your reverb, just try to increase the color to bring those reflections back up so you don't like muddy up your mix so you get like a really cool sound on a simple saw I have it more fun. but anyway yeah that's a reverb effect a uh, small reverb basically the same it's just a smaller kind of algorithm if you want like a very small room size right right and that that, that would add you know, if you want to have like a, a small kind of reverb and then a reverb after, uh, you can get, you can enhance, you can have like a very small reflection, kind of like a room within a room and get some really interesting effects. Uh, flanging, flanging is uh, basically, uh, it splits the sound and it delays the sound left and right. So you get like, you know, peaks kind of canceling each other out. It's kind of like if you play two songs at the same time and they're slightly off. Uh, we can we can maybe do an exercise and try this in a later video. Just remind me. But if you have two songs and you stack them up and you play them at the same time, uh, they'll kind of phase each other out if you move them back and forth. So that's basically what flanging is doing. Oops. So uh, wet dry, obviously wet dry. Right, so the rate uh, is the amount that they're doing this, right? So we'll go feedback. Feedback is the wet, the, the original sound coming in. It's kind of wet and dry and feedback is kind of reversed here. You can see it's coming through. So we'll see now, right? right this is monophonic. You see one wave, it's green. But when we bring uh, the effect in, you see it's stacked, but the rate is at zero, so it's not moving back and forth. If we increase the rate, you see it go like back and forth slightly, uh, and the depth is the amount, really. So 
what does that do? Well, it makes things sound wider. Uh, and it's kind of like chorus. And yeah, it's very stereo. If we go, this is a flanger positive. If we go flanger positive mono, it sums it to mono. Right, so this would be good for like evolving pads, especially if you have like the rate lower. Right? Uh, so there's positive and negative. Um, I can't explain that. But uh, what I find is, is it, was ba it basically does stuff with the phase differently. Uh, but positive is more intense, and uh, flanger negative is less intense. Right, we'll go uh, wet. So you'll see that it's not so obnoxious. But then uh, positive is... It does stuff to the fades differently. Right, uh, it, it just inverts it. it. It's inverts it differently. I'm not quite sure what's going on. And there's mono, so you can get rid of the, the phasing or whatever. All right, so what chorus does. Chorus is like another uh, type of thing. It's a delay effect, uh, kind of. What it's doing is it's doubling the sound uh, and then detuning them slightly right changing the rate that it's played so it's basically like a very fast kind of delay that could be modulated right so we have you know from one saw to two so it's kind of like a chorus like a you know a bunch of people singing right, and the offset changes the offset and the depth kind of you know modulates the depth that uh, we're modulating. So we can increase the rate. Right. So depending on what you're going for, a slow rate. So when you're using effects, you really use them sparingly. Right, so that's quite a bit. So, you know. So what it's doing is it's, it's a kind of a, a primitive form of unison, right? And there's chorus mono, which, you know, puts it back to mono. Sums it to mono. Uh, and then there is a chorus ensemble. Uh, I'm not sure what that does. Uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, it, from the manual, this version uses four different modulation signals for a very rich and smooth chorus effects effect. So, uh, instead of two um, channels going through, it's um, it's four, allegedly. I don't see it, but okay, we'll take that. You know. All these effects are basically different forms of delay apart from uh, the phaser, which is uh, a bunch of uh, filters on different channels, right? So, uh, which brings us to a phaser. A phaser is kind of different. What it's doing is it's, it's yeah, basically a bunch of all-pass filters. You can see the filter there, and you're modulating them. Alright, so we'll go wet and you can see what's going on. Right. Right, it's so you can get that same effect with a filter. In fact, the older virus, um, or even uh, the Nord, the Nord doesn't have a fa like effects, but you can still get phasing effects. If you modulate um, a certain filter on here, which um, I'll show you later, I guess. Uh, yeah, that is a phaser, and obviously the phaser mono, it, it sums it back to mono. Right? And then you'd obviously mix it in appropriately. Right, so you can get like a drifting kind of oscillator effect, which is pretty cool. That brings us to our dimension expander. So what this does, it's uh, there's a a reactor ensemble about it. 
Um, it's basically a combination of delay and chorus, right? So it's it's a it's a, it's a room style reverb with some delay. So it's a, like a super fast delay with a reverb at, that I can hear. Uh, Steve Duda, he has a plugin that he made uh, based off this. And uh, yeah, he based it off the Reactor Ensemble. Um, and it's a kind of a nice effect to have pre... You can have this before um, a reverb, which would be pretty cool. Uh, delay. So what delay is, is it takes a signal and then delays it uh, a certain amount. And this is a stereo delay. It's kind of a free tape delay. You notice that there's no feedback. There's only damp. Right, so if we go all wet, damp is kind of like a filter. So what it does is it... it uh, it's kind of a like a stereo winding effect, this type of delay. So we have a delay like super fast and then kind of slower here. We have like a stereo widening effect that the the has that I forget what it's called, some sort of effect. Uh, then of course we can uh, sync it. So how this works is you know how you like have sixteenths and stuff like that. So like one over sixteen would be of course one over sixteen. And we have feedback. So feedback controls this is a filter. Think of this as a filter of the delay effect. A filter for the wet signal. Uh, when feedback is all the way to the left, you get one, you know, note of feedback. We increase it. You know, it increases. Right. And if you have these the same value, uh, it's it's a simple delay, and it's pretty cool. All right, so we can go sixteenth and then quarter notes. All right, simple delay. Uh, dimension expander. Did I already do that? Yeah, I did. Oh, I did it in reverse. All right, the dimension expander. You know, it's a bunch of. Uh, delay and chorus effects which is pretty cool so now we have our tube section so this is kind of so what this is is you have a drive and a wet drive so a drive and a mix right so you can mix the overdriven sound with the dry sound uh, but what we're going to do is we are going to have our uh, sine wave here right because different tube delays they they do things to the, the the harmonics differently. Like some will like completely take away the bass, and some will kind of add to it. So I encourage you to have to use a, a frequency analyzer with a sine wave to see what's going on with all your plugins. It's fun to do. So I'll I'll just have this right on here. So let's see what it does to the harmonics. The classic tube. So this is you know it adds like a warm and dirty sound. And uh, the drive is when you overdrive it, you get kind of clipping, right? So, so yeah, overdriving the audio input so it becomes compressed. So there's a bunch of different kinds of clipping. Digital clipping is just like just cutting the tops off everything, which you know adds harmonics. So you can turn like a sine wave into a square wave. Uh, but a tube is less reactive. It's not as reactive as that. It won't just cut it off. It'll add certain things. It's not linear. That's why tubes are pretty amazing. Anyway, let's increase the drive of the classic. You see, we're adding harmonics. See, a sine wave, it's boring, right? So I'll turn that off. Sine wave is boring. It's just one fundamental. It's a sine wave, and you can see it up here. And when we add our drive, we're adding harmonics. We have effectively turned the sine wave into a square wave. Which is pretty neat. Uh, so once yeah, you you have that, you can you know this will like take away a bit of the bass, a bit of the low end, you mix it in. So you still have those upper harmonics and you still have your bass. So 
there's no right or wrong kind of tube. They're just different uh, algorithms. So the Teletube is another one, and this one's a bit more, well, it's a less intense. <laughs> They're different kind of intensities. All right. And uh, the Bronner tube down here is the brightest. You see what it's doing? It's kind of doing like a, a wave shaping kind of fold back. So it's not completely clipping the sign. It's kind of folding it back because it doesn't know what else to do. What's the Teletube doing? So it does that, but it's not as intense, right? And, the, you know, the classic tube is uh, the most kind of intense one, right? So, with that, so why are we using a sine wave? Well, we can see what it does through the harmonics. So if we have something uh, square, well, that will actually, we'll pick a saw. A lot of harmonics are already there, so what I'll do is I took a picture of it. So the red one is, you know, what we started out as. Let's see what the tube actually does. Where it adds a bit of low end, but we still keep, you know, a bit of the the harmonics of it. So in turn, makes it a little bit louder. Uh, that probably wasn't the best example. Let's try the. Teletubby, Teletube. All right, adds a little bit more. And the broader tube. Right. It's a pretty intense. Folds it back a bit more. can see it there right so it takes away but it adds right you know what I mean uh, and it really depends on what you're doing so of course if you have like a drive or if you have like wet dry uh, you can mix it in um, in some tubes they take away low end but they almost always add a lot of pleasing upper harmonics which are awesome uh, and of course we have let me just get rid of that. Of course, we have our EQ. So it's basically uh, a shelf and a boost-based EQ. So you can... Uh, this is a shelf EQ, so it's pretty basic. All right. So see what it does, and uh, there's just two kind of frequencies here. to add a bit more bite and that completely shaped the wave, if that makes any sense. So, a kind of a powerful EQ. So if you mix and match. So if you have like a tube and it's taking away those harmonics, or if you want your overall sound to be brighter, you combine these. And, uh, Pretty much that's what you do. All right, this video's been about 20 minutes. Uh, effects are kind of complicated, uh, different effects chains. Uh, but yeah, I hope you learned something. And uh, I guess we'll be back, and uh, take care.